Let's play a game. I'll start by choosing a 3D shape, but I won't show it to you. Instead, I'll cast shadows from three directions, and based on the shadows, you'll have to figure out the original shape. Got it? Okay, let's see the first round. Two of the shadows are triangles, and the third is a square. Can you guess the mystery shape? Did you say pyramid? Okay, what about these shadows? A circle and two rectangles. Yep, that's a cylinder. And how about this one, with three squares? You probably have one of these at home. Here's mine. It looks pretty intricate on top. Of course, the shape I'm talking about is the Serpinski Pyramid! What else would it be? Okay, hold on. How is that possible? You were probably expecting this to be a cube, but it's actually triangular and has lots of holes. Let's rewind and see that again. Well, there are no camera tricks. This shape really does look like a solid square from some angles, even though it's mostly hollow and looks see-through from other directions. And this isn't the only shape with that property. Here are two more which also have cube-like shadows. It's hard to believe after seeing them from other directions. These 3D prints were gifted to me by Hideki Tsuiki, a mathematician who studies objects like these. He calls them imaginary cubes, because their square shadows make them look like cubes. It's amazing and completely unexpected. So how did he come up with these shapes? Well, they're based on these three solids, each of which fits nicely inside of a cube. And these shapes can be turned into fractals by replacing them with smaller copies of themselves in a certain pattern, and repeating. What's amazing is that all of these iterations are examples of imaginary cubes, including the original three shapes. How cool is that? Our goal is to understand exactly why this works. And along the way, you'll learn how to design your own imaginary cubes and turn them into fractals. Let's get into it. For the main shape, let's start with an entire cube. Of course, this is an imaginary cube, although it isn't very interesting. But we can divide the cube into smaller ones, and then some of them can be removed without changing the shadows. Here the light is still blocked by other cubes in all three directions. We could also remove the opposite corner, but now we're stuck. Removing any other cube will change the shadows. So you might wonder if six little cubes is the fewest possible, or if we could do better by being more strategic. How few can we use? Well, to cast one full shadow, there has to be at least enough cubes to fill one face. Then to make the other horizontal shadow, we can offset the stacks like this. For the third shadow, we can shift the layers, except this pushes one of the little cubes past the border. So we'll send that cube back to the other side. And that's it! We made a pattern that's an imaginary cube using only four little cubes. Here's the same construction at a different scale. We'll shift the stacks, then the layers, and push back the overextended cubes. There we go! Another imaginary cube! Patterns like these, which use the fewest little cubes for their size, we'll call minimal. A feature of minimal patterns is that they have exactly one little cube in every row, every column, and every stack. This property might sound familiar if you've ever played Sudoku. When the grid is solved, each number appears exactly once in every row and every column. Grids with this property are called Latin squares, and they come in all sizes. It turns out that Latin squares can be used to make minimal patterns, and this is done by turning the Latin square into an elevation map. That is, on top of each grid cell, 
we'll build a tower whose height is the number in that cell. So start by laying down the Latin square, and then build a tower on top of each cell with the appropriate height. Now just keep the top of each stack, and you'll get an imaginary cube which is minimal. Here's another example with a 5x5 five five Latin square. Just raise each cube to the designated height, and that's another minimal imaginary cube. Can you explain why this works? See if you can make an argument using the row and column properties of Latin squares. So now we've seen lots of imaginary cubes made out of cubes. The reason we care about these shapes is that they're incredibly useful for making new imaginary cubes. The big insight is that we can replace the small cubes with any other imaginary cubes, even the pattern itself, and the result will still be an imaginary cube, because these objects have the same shadows as the cubes they replaced. Isn't that clever? This pattern alone gives us a ton of flexibility to design our own imaginary cubes using the replacement trick. But there's one design in particular that we should be interested in. It's the one you get by replacing all of the cubes with a copy of the pattern, which is exactly the process of building a fractal. This one pairs well with the tetrahedron, which is also an imaginary cube, so the last replacements don't change the shadows. And that's it! We have an explanation for why these fractal shapes are imaginary cubes. The key idea was to start with an imaginary cube made of cubes, and then use the replacement trick. Of course, the depth of these fractals depends on how many times you iterate the replacement process. But the point is that these are all imaginary cubes, and now we know why. So we solved the mystery of these fractals. But there's one more thing to appreciate. It turns out that the patterns we use to make them are all minimal. You can check that they come from these Latin squares. So this is why the 3D prints are so sparse, and why it's even more breathtaking when they line up and their shadows become solid. That moment is why these shapes deserve to be recognized, and should be in the spotlight, if you know what I mean. So now we know that there are lots of shapes with three square shadows. But what about other shadows? Can you think of a 3D shape with these circular shadows, which is not a sphere? Leave your ideas in the comments. For more on this topic, you should check out the work done by Hideki Tsuki. You'll see lots of other shapes which are imaginary cubes, as well as some imaginary cube packing puzzles. It turns out that the red and yellow shapes fit together in some unexpected ways. There's even a discussion of imaginary cubes in four dimensions, and higher! I'll put links to these articles in the description, so feel free to follow up on any of the topics if you're interested. I hope you enjoyed learning about imaginary cubes, and I'll see you in the next video!